Hello. So what do you got going on today? What's going on? This, what's your name? Tell my, them who you are. My name is Bailey. Bailey. It's my daughter. She's seven. And she's part of Limitless Power Sports Service Repair also. She wants to learn how to work on stuff. I don't know what the YouTube stuff is on this. Let me get down here where you can see me. It's because she's so little and short. So we were just making a short clip. It won't go on YouTube or anything like that. Mom won't like that, but we can keep it for us, okay? But what I'm trying to teach people is this is a this motor here come out of a a, a, a side by side or a utility vehicle or a UTV, and a lot of people have questions about this kind of motor, and they're not some of them aren't very good because the parts are made very cheap. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over and teach them how the clutches work. And then we're and we're gonna clean all that up and rebuild those, and then uh, we'll slowly talk about the top end, which is up here. This is called the top end, and everything down in here is called the bottom end. And we'll talk about the timing chains, how they stretch, the timing chain tensioners go out and cause the timing to go off, and we'll talk about valve clearances and compression and leak down and a few other things. So what I'll probably end up doing, I'll probably go over the clutches first. And then we'll go ahead and uh, squirt some oil down the cylinder and turn it over. We'll do a leak down test anyways. We won't do a compression test. We'll do a leak down test to see what's going on. And we'll take it apart and talk about everything we find out. And we'll check the charging system on it. We'll make sure the stator's good and that the uh, ignition pickup is good. This here is the gear position sensor. Hello, this is a motor. This motor is from, this from 2015. 2015 Massimo, Massimo MSU, MSU 700. 700. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel again. I am Kyle with Limitless Power Sports Service and Repairs. Uh, as you know, we're doing a multi-part series on this 2015 uh, Massimo MSU 700 engine by Hi Sun. Um, we talked about how these are a lot of the same in your Coleman's, your Cub Cadets, your Vic Vectors, your Massimo's, uh, uh, Benchies, all that stuff. They're all pretty much just labeled for somebody else. So today, uh, what we're going to go over, we're going to go over how to check the charging system on this. Uh, three different ways to do that. Uh, you have checking for ohms on the windings for ohms uh, and opens the grounds. Um, and also AC voltage output. As you can tell, I will, will not be able to do the AC voltage output on this. Uh, I don't have the motor hooked up to run it uh, that actually gonna output the AC voltage for us so we can read that. But the simple way to do this is very easily. You're just gonna need your uh, multimeter. We'll go ahead and we'll set that on, ohm, on ohms. We'll put that down there for you. We'll grab our plug. The plug we're going to check for charging is these these three, I believe these are a white-ish, what it looks like white, it's hard to tell, these are oil soaked, but we're going to check between these three different points. So we'll stick one here, and one over here in the other one, and we should get a reading of about 0.4 to 0.5, so we got 0.3 ohms, which is good. Go on to the next one, Oops, we'll leave that one there. We'll go down here to this one. 0.3 ohms, and then we need to check from this one to this one. And that's 0.4 ohms. Those are all, those are pretty even. So our next test would be, we know there's no open in the, in the windings. So the next test is gonna be from each one of these legs to ground to make sure the, mo make sure the stator isn't grounded out. Now some, some models, not necessarily this, but some manufacturers do have a little bit of a uh, a ground. I have a, a KFX 50 that actually has some ohms to ground and that's actually part of the service manual uh, specs on it. But on these it should be an infinity. You guys can see that down there. Nothing. We'll try the next one. Nothing which is good. And the third. And it's infinity. So that's all good. There's no, no grounds on the inside. So when you check the AC voltage you do the same thing but you actually put it on volts AC and you check between all three of these pins at an idle. So you would stick it in here and here, you would check these, you check this, and then you check these two side by side uh, at an idle and at revved up about three to 5,000 RPMs. You should get a pretty close reading between them all. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna go ahead and uh, 
We're gonna pull the fan cover off and we're gonna go ahead and uh, open the side case of this thing so you guys can get a look at uh, the stator. And it's really easy to change outside of the unit. Uh, a lot of times you got a lot of bars that block this thing, it makes it really a pain in the butt when you gotta take all of this off, the water pump and all that has to come off too. So this line and all that. So we'll go ahead and pull this line. I'm gonna go ahead and take the water pump off uh, since we're gonna go ahead and split the whole motor down eventually in other parts of the series. So we'll start with the fan case, the fan blade, the backing for it, the hose for the water pump, pull the water pump off, and then we'll go ahead and take all the bolts out of the stator cover. All right, so we're gonna need, we're gonna take out these four bolts here that do the cover. Now, a lot of times what happens is that the, uh, like we talked about in the, with the, with the, uh, the clutch is that the, the nut, the nut starts they put in the plastic will spin. Sometimes you gotta pry out on it or you have to just kind of shave it away to eventually get it out. It's kind of a shame. Uh, they don't see like that one. Perfect example. That one, that one didn't. And that one did. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna grab either a flathead screwdriver, probably a small pry bar since I have those. We'll grab our small pry bars. The shame that, of course, you know, nothing new when it comes to these things. We'll go ahead and try to get down in here, try to put a little pressure on it to see if it'll come out. Sometimes you gotta rip them out. Yep, that one's not gonna go anywhere right now. Somehow. Yeah, none of these are gonna actually go anywhere, unfortunately. So what we're gonna have to do, I'm gonna have to just probably get a new fan cover for this. We're just gonna pop those out and We'll just uh, order up a new cover from Amazon, which is really not that big of a deal. It's, they're pretty cheap and inexpensive. So we'll just break it all off. Boom, there we go. That simple, a lot easier outside of the outside. So now we'll take the fan off. And then we'll take the back cover off. We know we need to do one of those also. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and take off the hose here. Get that up and out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and take the water pump off. Just makes my life a little simpler. wiggle it out it's got a little o-ring you don't necessarily have to take that off but if you can get this off with leaving some hoses on it it's a very very big pain in the butt but you can do that we'll leave that one up to you guys but you can see it has an o-ring on it um, so we'll clean all that up and when we reinstall it we'll check the inside of it make sure it's all good so there's a water pump we'll go ahead and take the bolt out that holds the for the fan motor that's actually a 16 millimeter we'll pop this guy off here there we go put that off to the side then we'll go ahead and run and get all these eight millimeter head six by one oh bolts out just go ahead how you want Some are, they are different or length and stuff like that, but you'll be able to find out what goes where. I mean, you could mark them, like I said before, if you want to go ahead and write a one, two all the way around and then mark your bolts the same or a piece of tape on them. 
but you can also find out by like this one here is longer than that one if you take this one and stick it in there you know it doesn't fit because it doesn't stick out a little bit you know that's not right because it sticks out way too far but it sticks out a little bit there so you know that's good so i'm just going to go ahead and pull them all out myself there's not a lot of a lot of them that are uh much longer you do have some that have like some more threads on them that go over here but like i said it's really simple to find all that out we'll go ahead and stick these in i like to separate all my stuff like i said before in ziploc baggies that when i go put it back together i know it's all from the same area so we know that it's from the stator Grab my dead blow hammer. I'm sure we're probably gonna make a mess. So let me grab a shop, old shop towel. Throw it down here. We'll just hit it pretty good. Should come loose. Remember it is magnetized in there a little bit. And they do have, do have dowels. So you'll have to kind of walk it out. If I don't flip the motor over first. Ooh, somebody had actually cracked the bottom of that. So I just saw in this case, somebody's been in here before and they cracked the bottom part of the case on, probably hit something low, uh, cracked all that. Didn't know that was cracked. Did a pretty good job of JB welding it back together but it's, it's cracked. Um, again, I could put, I'll put it all in it, putting this back on there together and it'd be for sale, but I'll just have to mention that this says have a crack in it and a person can actually use their case halves. Um, there's your stator thing looks really good. I don't really see any burnt wiring anywhere. There's your pickup, which triggers off of all these guys. So honestly, it's a very easy job. All right, so what we'll go ahead and do, we'll go ahead and put the bolt back in here. That gives us something to push again so we don't split the crank here or mess up any of the splines. So we can go ahead and put that all the way back down tight. Um, I forget what size this is exactly. I could probably measure that, but we'll go ahead and take that. We'll spin it on there. Let me back this guy out here a little bit. Should be a, this one is actually a 19 millimeter and then I'll grab a crescent wrench and we'll put it on. I like to go all the way down till it touches. And there we go. So we'll grab a 19 millimeter uh, socket. We'll hit that with the impact. You're not really supposed to, but it makes it easier. Hold that with a crescent wrench. All right, so this is actually a 21 millimeter, not a 19. Uh, a lot of my other ones are 19s. Some are different, some are not. And then I'll grab my crescent wrench And there we go. Loosen that back up, slide that guy back off. And then we'll loosen this all the way back off of here. Take the bolt back out. slide this off. You can see your one way bearing back here. Um, sometimes you can replace it with this whole entire piece by just taking these out. Uh, you can, you got to heat these up, smack them with a uh, impact driver before you try to break them loose. Otherwise you're going to have big problems. Um, I do have a, let's see, I'll leave a, a card up in the description for my uh, Yamaha Warrior I did this on. Uh, pretty much the same concept. All these are pretty much set up the same. But like I was saying here, see you can't get this off because there's a wood drift key right there. So what we got to do now is just take that out. It's a little half moon guy. Like I said, I couldn't remember. You can see that, take him out. We'll stick him on the inside. And now you can slide off the rest of the gear for that and then put it back in the back. As you can see, it locks. That's why I call it one-way bearing. It only spins freely one way and then it locks. Turn the motor over as the motor's turning over, it's spinning, that spins freely so we don't have any binding or anything. 
Uh, you can see your starter reduction gears and all that. We'll go ahead and just pull all that out. There is no washer behind this one, but there is a bearing on the inside. And then you got your oil pump chain. You got your uh, cam chain tensioner and gear for all that. And this guy here is like basically helps quiet it down a little bit. So you don't need to go this deep when you're doing your charging system, but I figured while we're here, I might as well go on and show you that. So that's what that is. You just go ahead and do the process in reverse to put it back together with a new gasket. Tighten all your bolts on the uh, outer cover to about 10 to 12 newton meters all the way around. Same thing with the, the fan cover. Do those, you know, not quite that because like I showed you, I had to break that one because of those plastic nut certs go in there. But even your Phillips heads inside of here, uh, I can see this has been replaced. Somebody has changed that out. So I would go ahead and tighten those about the same, but I would use blue Loctite inside here. I have seen these back out on motorcycles and stuff and cause issues because people haven't used blue Loctite or torqued them down properly. So again, guys, if you got any questions about motorcycles, ATVs or UTVs, you know, leave a comment down below uh, or you can email me at limitlesspowersports78 at gmail. Again, if you haven't liked and subscribed, please do. It helps my channel out a lot. We're slowly growing, so we're trying to grow this channel really big to inform you guys on what's going on, if you, you know, and all that. And it's an easy way to support a friend uh, in, in what they're doing, and it's absolutely free. Again, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you on the next upload.